Ableton have released their first ever iOS app called Notes. In this video, I'm gonna explain what it's all about, show the beat making workflow of the app, and share my first impressions of it and its pros and cons. It's a great app, but it does miss some important features that will hopefully be added at some point. More about these later in the video. What is going on guys? This is Low Heat and I was super excited earlier today when I saw the news of Ableton releasing their first app for the iPhone and the iPad called Note. Well, judging from the comments under their introduction video on Ableton's channel, Android users weren't so excited because the app is iOS only. But that is to be expected since due to technical reasons, and one of these reasons being latency, most mobile music apps are made for Apple's platform. So what is the deal with Note? Is it Ableton for your iPhone? Well, not quite. It's more of a sketchpad app for quickly capturing musical ideas on the go and then using the new Ableton Cloud feature to transfer these creations to the mothership which is the Ableton Live application on your computer. There you can further develop your musical ideas. And the nice thing here is that the app features some of the sounds and devices from the actual Ableton Live application. This means that when you transfer your tracks to the computer, they're not just audio, but you have the actual devices in life generating and processing sounds. And even though probably the best use case for this app is using it on your phone on the go, in this case, I'm gonna be using it on my iPad. I've got it here in landscape mode to fill up the whole screen, but it works and looks exactly the same if you're using it on your iPhone. So we got some demo projects here, but I'm just gonna start with a new one, create a new project. And you see I've got three tracks laid vertically in the same manner that we have them in Ableton's session view. So the first one is a drum track. And the thing about note is that as you start playing the pads or the keys, it starts recording everything in the background. So it's all based on Ableton's capture feature, but you can even see the MIDI notes being recorded. So let's make a beat first. I'm gonna choose the kit. So as you saw, I just pressed the capture button and my recording was captured. Here's the quantize button. I've quantized it and and if I hold that button, I can see all the quantization features. Now, what I'm missing here is quantization strength. So you either have quantized or no quantization at all, and you don't have swing. So these are essential features that I hope will be added at some point. Otherwise, you are restricted to just having everything hard quantized if you can't play it perfectly in real time and playing without quantization on a touch screen and on a mobile device is not really ideal. So I definitely want to see these features added at some point. So here's what we have so far. And we have effects per pad. So effects for each and every cell of what is basically the drum rack or kit effects, which are the master effects for this drum rack. So on the third track, we have the sampler and I'm gonna record a sample and sequence it. I'm gonna use this glocking spiel and just gonna record a C note that I'm gonna play using the sampler inside note. And I'm gonna be recording it with my iPad's built-in mic. So I just press record sample and I'm gonna hit the note. Hitting stop and Ableton has set the starting point of the sample to the first transient that it found. So it's really fast to trim your samples. It does it automatically. And so to play the sample, I'm first gonna go to my settings and the tempo is 90. So this was detected from my playing when I used the capture feature. And with the key and scale, I'm gonna use E minor. Going back to the samplers parameters, I'm gonna add more release. In the effects section, we've got some delay on the first effect. We can choose whatever effect we want. We've got the channel EQ, the chorus ensemble, the delay, phaser, flanger, redux, reverb, and saturator. 
a really nice selection of essential effects. On FX2, we have the reverb loaded automatically, so this is what I'm gonna use. Oh, and for recording, we've got different layouts. So if you press on this menu down here, we got the pad. So this is similar to the Ableton push and it eliminates all the wrong notes when we have selected a scale or we have the keys. And, and if you're not using the in key mode, the keys are basically laid out like regular piano keys. And again, you can see that every, every time you play a note, it is recording it in the background. This indication, visual indication of the notes being recorded is kind of distracting to me a bit. I'm not used to it, so I'm gonna use the keyboard to record some notes. So I just hit the create clip option and then I have the clip. So as you can see, the clip is eight bars long. This is the maximum length that we can record, I think. And so if we drag to the left here, I can just delete these four bars that I don't need. So I got only the good bars that I recorded. Let me quantize them. And if I want to change the volume, I can go back to the main page and here we have this mixer control. Okay, so on the second track, we've got a basic so bass loaded. Let's see what else can we get as a bass sound. Okay, so let's just go back to the in key mode in the key of E minor and just record the bass line. And so as you saw, I just hit the create clip button and the notes were recorded in the clip. So now I will quantize them. And so going back to the main view, I can add a new track. Let's go for piano and keys. We're gonna try an E piano. So I quantize the notes and change the sound. Let's tweak some effects. And actually on the, on the device itself, I've got even the wave position, which shows us that this is the wavetable device most likely. And as you see, as I tweak the parameters, an automation curve is created. I just need to press the add button down below to enable the automation to have it recorded.
And by the way, if this video is useful to you, make sure to hit the like button down there, subscribe to the channel. And another way to support it is to check out my Ableton Life Packs and Sample Packs from the link down in the description of the video. Okay, let's add one more track for a lead synth. So if I go back to my main screen, here's my set number one that I just created. So to transfer it to my computer, I can use the upload to Ableton Cloud and Ableton Cloud will appear in your Ableton browser. You just need to connect it to your Ableton account. I'm just gonna use AirDrop for this situation because I haven't really set up the Ableton Cloud. And just to save a bit of time, I'm just gonna AirDrop it to my computer. And obviously, if you're on Windows, you'll need to use the Ableton Cloud. So here's that Ableton Live set, and it's loaded in live. And as you can see, the drum kit is the drum rack. The plug is a wavetable. We've got the simpler for the sample that I recorded and wavetable for the other sounds. So my first impressions of the app is that it's really fast, easy to use, very high quality app, great user interface. The sounds and effects are really good and this is no surprise considering they are the same that we have in the full version of Ableton Live. Not all of them, of course, just a small portion of them, but still the exact same instruments and effects. So it's really great for sketching and just recording quick demos from your phone's built-in mic. But the cons of this initial release are that when you're recording MIDI, you either have it unquantized or quantized 100%, no swing, no quantization strength, and this is a bit limiting, especially for hip hop producers. I'm really, really hoping that they will add the ability to chop samples like we have on the simpler in the full version of Ableton Live. And also it doesn't seem to receive MIDI from an external MIDI keyboard. That would be a great addition as well. So the app costs about five or six dollars in the app store, depending on where you are in the world. I think it's worth getting for that price. But what do you think? Do you think it's worth getting? Do you like what you saw? Let me know down in the comments and thank you so much for watching everyone and hope to see you in the next video.